Imagine discovering a hidden gateway that could reveal the secrets of one of the world's most mysterious and mythical locations. An incredible find was recently revealed in Jerusalem that has left scholars and professionals speechless. Join us as we explore the riddle of what could be the Garden of Eden's gate, a finding that could forever impact the way we see the world. Garden of Eden Eden is said to be the first place where humans were formed. The first two humans, named Adam and Eve, innocently explored this paradise until a cunning serpent and a forbidden fruit got them, and hence all humanity, into big trouble. This story is meant to represent how humanity descended from a state of childish innocence and bliss to one marked by free will and knowledge, as well as evil and death. In Genesis 2, 10-14, the location of the garden is stated as follows, And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became four heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It encompasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. There is Bedellium and the onyx stone, it adds. And the name of the second river is Gihon, which encompasses the entire territory of Cush. And the name of the third river is Tigris. It is the one that flows east of Assur. The Euphrates is the fourth river. The essential point here is that it is situated at the confluence of four rivers, we are also familiar with two of these rivers today, the Tigris and the Euphrates, which originate in Turkey and flow through Syria and Iraq before draining into the Persian Gulf. However, it is uncertain what the names Pishon and Gihon make reference to. Some theologians theorized over the years that they might allude to the Ganges in India and the Nile in Egypt, while others emphasized that this would imply a significant chunk of the earth. John Calvin, a 16th-century theologian famous for his part in the Protestant Reformation, wrote, Many think that Pison and Gihon are the Ganges and the Nile. However, the distance between these rivers proves that these people are wrong. People are plenty who fly across the Danube, as though the residence of one man extended from the farthest reaches of Asia to the farthest reaches of Europe. Nonetheless, given the mention of the Tigris and Euphrates, we can presume that the Garden of Eden was inspired by a location in Iraq and Iran, where these two rivers meet near the Persian Gulf. On the Iran-Iraq border, there is a river called Shat al-Arab, which is formed by the confluence of the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. The Garden of Eden in Ezekiel's Book Although no one in the canonical Bible ever returns to Eden after Adam and Eve's banishment, there are a few important references to the garden strewn throughout Ezekiel's predictions. In chapter 31, for example, God's message through Ezekiel compares the powerful Egyptian pharaoh to a mighty cedar tree, greater in glory and greatness than the trees in Eden, which sounds like a compliment, but the message is, God doesn't care how cool a tree is, he'll cut it down when he wants to. The most well-known Eden-related verse in Ezekiel, however, occurs in the midst of chapter 28, when God proclaims his judgment on the wicked ruler of Tyre. In a lengthy metaphor, God compares this king to an angel in the garden who was adorned with diamonds and gold. Eventually, sin enters the picture in the shape of vanity and violence, and God expels the angel and casts him into fire and ashes. While this scenario is meant to describe the fall from grace of a human king, most likely Ithabal III, who lived around the same time as Ezekiel, some Christians believe it is a description of Satan's fall as a beautiful, beloved angel cast into the fire for his pride corrupted wisdom and violence. In the Show Me State, the Garden of Eden According to Genesis and other sacred texts, Eden is either located somewhere in the Middle East, at least within spitting distance of the Tigris and Euphrates, or is located on a more celestial plane accessible only to righteous souls after Judgment Day. The terrestrial paradise, on the other hand, is a little closer to home for Mormons. According to Fair Mormon, Latter-day Saints tradition holds that the Garden of Eden was located somewhere in Jackson County, Missouri. According to the LDS religion, after being driven out of Eden, Adam and Eve settled in Adam on the Amman, which is located in modern-day Davies County, Missouri. After seeing a rock formation that resembled an altar, Joseph Smith is believed to have received a heavenly vision that this was the location where Adam blessed his progeny and gave offerings to God. Perhaps more importantly, in fulfillment of prophecy, Jesus will return to this location and construct a new Jerusalem. Fair Mormon admits that the divine revelation may have designated the Missouri site as critical to this future event 
which reflects another non-Missouri location from Adam's mortal past, which would explain the doctrine's references to mountains in Adam on the Amon, which would be unusual in notoriously flat Missouri, but this is not the popular interpretation. Garden of Eden in Africa On a more scientific, keep in mind if we accept that the Garden of Eden represents the beginnings of mankind, we must look to Africa. The so-called Cradle of Humankind is located around 50 kilometers northwest of Johannesburg in South Africa. This site contains the world's highest concentration of human ancestral remains. Among the millions of fossils discovered here are the remnants of Australopithecus, an early ape-like human species dating back 3.4 to 3.7 million years. Modern Homo sapiens did not appear until around 200 to 300,000 years ago. Once again, Africa was the site of this evolution, with modern humans most likely first appearing in modern-day Ethiopia. So, if we're seeking a scientific Garden of Eden, South Africa and Ethiopia appear to be our best choice. It remains to be seen whether these areas were formerly home to a paradise where four rivers once converged. Is the Garden of Eden underwater? While many historians believe the Garden of Eden account is legendary or at best metaphorical, there have been some rather significant archaeological investigations regarding the location of paradise on Earth. According to a 1987 Smithsonian Magazine article, one such analysis contends that the account of Eden was metaphorical, but not that metaphorical. While mythologists argue that the Garden of Eden story, as well as similar concepts such as the Golden Age in Greco-Roman mythology, represent a shared memory of a time when everything was provided for us without effort, archaeologist Juris Zarens argued that the story of Adam and Eve's expulsion from the garden was a metaphor for society's transition from hunting and gathering to agriculture. Also, the garden is submerged. Dr. Zarens used satellite imagery to argue the Pison is a now dry river in northern Arabia and the Gihon is the Karun River which flows from Iran into the Persian Gulf. Using the logical starting point of the Tigris and Euphrates and positing that when the Bible says Eden was in the east, it means east of Israel. This would locate the garden at the mouth of the gulf, where it is currently submerged, so bring a snorkel if you want to go looking for the Tree of Life. Is the Garden of Eden in Armenia? One of the frequently proposed places for the Garden of Eden is Armenia, commencing with the Tigris and Euphrates, both of which have their headwaters in Armenia. Mount Ararat's position on the Armenian plateau adds to the connection. Mount Ararat is usually regarded as the landing site of Noah's Ark. Therefore, the concept is that humankind's post-Diluvian rebirth would occur near its original birthplace. The Armenian history and culture site People of Ar gather narratives of famous and notable persons who have claimed for Armenia to be the location of the earthly paradise, frequently contrasting the calm idea of Eden with the sad reality of Armenia's sometimes terrible history. Lord Byron, a romantic poet, was a supporter of an Armenian Eden, regretting that the satraps of Persia and the Pakas of Turkey have alike desolated the region where God created man in his own image. Similarly, the Encyclopedia of Biblical, Theological, and Ecclesiastical Literature uses Armenia as the most likely of nine alternative locations for the garden, even going so far as to specify particular lines of latitude between which Eden must have lain. To be fair, if Armenia can create Alvin and the Chipmunks creator Ross, Dave Seville, Bagdazarian, who can argue it isn't a place of wonders? There are two Eden Gardens. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, there are two Gardens of Eden for the scholars behind the Jewish theological works known as the Talmud and the esoteric school of Jewish mysticism known as Kabbalah. The earthly garden, where Adam and Eve lived and ate fruit and played with penguins or whatever, is one and the celestial paradise where the immortal souls of the pious life is the other. These two ideas are distinguished by referring to a lower and higher Garden of Eden, or by referring to the earthly location as Gan and the celestial location as Eden. According to author Louis Ginsburg's 19th century collection of Jewish folk beliefs called the Legends of the Jews, Higher Eden is related to paradise and is where God hangs out and imparts Torah to humans. It consists of 310 worlds separated into seven sections for diverse classes of religious people. 
Ginsburg argues in Chapter 2 that the Tree of Life is so massive that walking the length of its diameter would take 500 years. Angels delivered meals and drink to Adam and Eve in the garden, and all the animals could communicate in human language. When a person dies, their soul travels from Lower Eden to Higher Eden. However, if they were unrighteous, the guardian cherub annihilates their soul with the blazing sword. The Celestial Eden and the Terrestrial Garden If you're not Jewish, it's easy to think that Jews believe in a similar afterlife to Christians, or at least the popular conception of what Christians believe. The righteous go to heaven and the unrighteous go to hell. While some Jewish beliefs include separate fates for the holy and the wicked, Jewish eschatology, theology of the end of times and the afterlife, focuses on the bodily resurrection of the dead, following an era of justice and peace led by a literal or metaphorical Messiah, leading to the creation of a new heaven and earth and history closing the loop by having humankind return to, you guessed it, the Garden of Eden. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, different apocalyptic writings describe Eden as a location for the righteous who suffer innocently, do works of benevolence and walk without blame before God that would appear suddenly at the judgment day in all its glory. Those who make it to the celestial Eden will wear light clothing and enjoy the immortality that comes with eating from the tree of life. The wicked will be punished seven times, but the righteous will be rewarded seven times over, living in mansions and strolling with God, who will lead them in dance. Ideas for the Garden of Eden While the tale of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden is central to Judaism, Christianity and Islam, the concept of a garden of heavenly delights has components with non-Abrahamic religions. This isn't unusual. A number of early Jewish stories, such as Noah's flood echoing the story of Utnapishtim in the Epic of Gilgamesh and baby Moses' basket of bulrushes copying off the paper of the legendary account of the birth of Sargon of Akkad, the Mesopotamian king, not the internet racist, are similar. Uncover the past secrets with our channel's unique coverage of the most recent archaeological discoveries. Make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you never miss out on the latest updates. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.